Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure for me to uh, have the opportunity here to speak and present my uh, part of the, my PhD project. The title of my presentation is the in situ monitoring and phenotyping of plant in vitro culture. Um, you probably are not all familiar with plant in vitro culture, so there's a definition. Uh, it's the cultivation of isolated plant cells, tissue or organs. Um, and artificial culture media um, to, yeah, for propagation or regeneration under sterile conditions. Um, so meaning we have those um, plants inside um, closed vessels. And um, it's also important, uh, so commercial important uh, micro uh, propagated plant species are Phalaenopsis, uh, Rubus and Helleborus. <clears throat> Um, those cultural containers have to be checked frequently for uh, malformations, contamination, and endophytes. And therefore, there's a big potential for uh, automated phenotyping. And uh, we come now for the, uh, yeah, to the uh, interesting parameters which our commercial labs are interested or determine the um, key perf uh, growth performance. Um, so biomass is a uh, desirable uh, parameter, multiplication rate and shoot length, um, the plant quality uh, matters, and also um, if there is occurrence of um, contaminations or endophytes. Um, but if you want to do a, a phenotyping in uh, this certain cultivation, then you face a number of challenges. Uh, here you see on this picture, how the uh, vessels look like. So you have condensed water formation. And um, if you look inside, you see the plants. And uh, you also, the um, yeah, culture uh, container material is not fully transparent. And um, you also have total reflection at the lid of the vessels. Additionally, and you also have um, total reflection at the um, media surface. <clears throat> Additionally, you have only limited space because the plants are cultivated in a multi-layer shelf system, as you see here, and that restricts the um, availability of um, certain sensor technology because uh, there is the minimum working distance for uh, specific sensors. And um, we counteract those challenges. Um, that, uh, so the condensed water, water formation, um, we use in so-called bottom cooling system. So we place those um, culture containers on cold surface, and then uh, the condensed water formation will not happen at the lid of the vessel. Um, we substitute the lid by uh, the use of a polyethylene film, because there you have a higher trans, uh, or, uh, clear fuel, so less diffuse, diffuse uh, fuel. And we um, event um, diffuse illumination that you will see on the slides uh, later. Um, so um, there's not much research done or um, regarding uh, automated phenotyping in this kind of area. And um, most of them are uh, followed the object to sensor approach, which, which is not, uh, yeah, or which uh, is not um, practical for an automation <clears throat> and also destructive. There's one report of, of an automated imaging system. Here you see a rotate, rotatable desk where uh, Petri dishes are.
non-imaging laser distance sensor and also non-imaging microspectrometer. <clears throat> and um, we also uh, did research on the accuracy of the repositioning of the gantry, and we accounted uh, of an average 0.1 millimeter of mean uh, mean absolute error of repositioning. <clears throat> Here you see the um, software of the whole uh, system. So we have those two Raspberry Pis that we um, hope or uh, that we um, run to Docker uh, container, and uh, the communication only happens via HTTP. And we have the separation of the two main tasks, which is motion control and data acquisition. Um, the communication via HTTP uh, is, uh, yeah, have the benefit that we have in programming language independent control of all the functions that we can remotely access via the internet. <clears throat> um, the code is already uh, available at uh, GitHub. <clears throat> Uh, he, here you see the data acquisition workflow. I will not bother you with uh, those details, but we already have met, uh, imaged three different plant species and different um, developmental phases. Each of the experiment contained 10 um, vessels with five explants, so 50 uh, plants per explant. We did RGB image, six per day for each vessel. Um, depth scan with the laser distance sensor uh, once per day for each vessel. And we uh, could measure the chlorophyll flow sense uh, of um, every found object that, uh, or of every plant. <clears throat> Here you see our data processing pipeline that we uh, also had to uh, develop. So we have, you have the original image, then we do an histogram stretching. We have trained uh, uh, yeah, a random forest uh, classifier with elastic. Um, and then you get the segmented RGB data. <clears throat> um, we also accounted or uh, calculated the uh, mean percentage error of the classification. And that was around 0.4%. <clears throat> uh, here you see the uh, uh, time lapse video of, uh, of the development of Arabidopsis uh, in vitro, and you see the segmented RGB images. <clears throat> I think. Yeah. Uh, we come now to the uh, DEF data processing pipeline. Um, with DEF data, uh, it's quite uh, challenging to segment the data because you don't have color information where you can separate between things. You only have the height. So therefore, we have our uh, original uh, image on the left. Mm. Uh, look for the culture media with half cycle with and reduce the uh, region of interest. So removing the problematic edges. And then we used uh, ANZAC to estimate the, um, the culture media height or the culture media plane. <clears throat> and with that, we can then subtract the, um, the culture media from the whole plant height and get the real plant height. <clears throat> and um, we also saw that all, with the laser distance sen sensor, we uh, only uh, could saw two thirds of the plant pixel compared to the RGB images. Um, here you see how the death data uh, look like, like over the time. So you see a reduction in media height and an increase in plant uh, pixels. But I will keep on <laughs> going. Um, the last thing that I uh, want to show is the chlorophyll fluorescence data. So uh, here you used, uh, we used our microspectrometer, put in uh, UV blocking. Um, filter uh, in front. And then um, over time, you see an increase in the chlorophyll fluorescence and uh, also the two specific uh, peaks, which derive from the photosystems. And that can be used as a potential uh, stress indicator. 
to summarize my presentation, um, the RTB data we can use as an um, qualitative um, uh, yeah, analysis uh, to study the growth, the induction of growth anomalies, or quantitative uh, if we measure protected plant area or do shape analysis of isolated uh, objects. We um, calculated new depth data uh, parameters like the media volume, average canopy height, and maximum plant height. Uh, the spectral data can be used as a stress indicator, maybe that we uh, want. Uh, yeah, we want to do uh, investigations, investigations on, and um, various sensor technology was applied uh, to the first time in this certain cultivation. We have now the database for um, to train um, AI uh, te techniques uh, for the complex parameters like the multiplication rate <clears throat> and yeah phenotyping uh, of plant in vitro culture offers great potential. Thank you for the. Uh,